something happened to me at a very similar time at that age. I was actually molested by my school teacher, mm. and I've often wondered whether I like put on weight to protect my body, For just sure. to kind of you know it was just interesting that I was like this scrawny little kid, and mm. then. You know, I kind of went through that abuse for about three years. I'm so sorry to hear that. It was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've kind of, I've done a lot of healing on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I still really think that I don't like being sexy and I don't like being close to people and that's why I put on my weight. Sure. So you don't have the attention right. on you. Right. I don't know how to be loved and I'm scared of being loved and um, I have to learn how to be loved. <laughs> Are you going to be okay if I love you? I love me. <laughs> no, I want to be loved. Yeah. Um, I really do, but um, I just, you know, and I've been really hurt. Like, I had two really, it's really funny. I've never really dated skinny. And, like, the first guy, when I lost all my weight the first uh -huh. time. So, wait, go back. Yeah, yeah. So, you went from underweight to nine years old, all of a sudden. A little bit you're chubby, yeah. Chubby, and then just. Get me through till you're right. an adult. And then my, I did ballet and my mm -hmm. ballet teacher always told me that I was too fat. And yet I look back at photos and I think, you know, I was pretty normal. Mm -hmm. But in the thanks. ballet world. Thanks, lady. Yeah. Thanks right. for that. And and I have always had this perception until recently mm -hmm. that I'm fatter than I am. Like, mm -hmm. I'll have photos where I'll see them and I'll go, oh my God, I totally thought that I was really, really fat there. And mm -hmm. I really, really wasn't. Right. Um, so I did ballet and was very, very active. And was, you know, nice, sexy, curvy girl, like, in mm. high school. Um, mm. But still, people call me fat. Um, and then I went to drama school and joined the um, uh, the Anorexia Club. Oh, good. Right? Great club, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very popular in Hollywood as oh. well, right? Big club here. Yeah, big Huge. club. And it. Um, it was a really difficult part of my life because I really struggled with a major eating disorder. Like, I had bulimia and... Wow. I was really unwell, like extremely unwell, and thought I was really, really fat, and uh, got down to about uh, 100 pounds. Wow. Wow. Yeah, right? And what age was that? Uh, I was 20, 20, around 20. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, my mother died when I was 22, Aww. and I proceeded to get up to 350 pounds. Wow. Yeah. How long did that take you? Uh, it took me about... Um, six years. Wow. And I just was eating myself to death. Like, yeah. really, I just gave up. I, mm. I was so brokenhearted. Um, you know, I'd spent my whole life looking for her because I'm adopted. It's another issue with love and being loved, <laughs> yeah. right? And and I found her and she died uh, pretty much, oh. like, within a year of meeting her. Oh, my God. Right? And um, and it was really sad and it broke my heart mm -hmm. and it just destroyed my life. Yeah. And I basically just ate and 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 ate. And eight. I got bigger and bigger. You know, yeah. I've always done everything I do um, to perfection. Yeah. <laughs> so I just did fat to perfection. Right. Now I'm going to get as fat as I can be. <laughs> you know, except that I was like going to die. Yeah. Um, and then I got pregnant with my son. At who what, was, at what age? I was 30. At 350 pounds. Right. Wow. Do you know uh, how it's hard a miracle? That, do you know how hard that is? <laughs> right. There's people out there that. And right? I wish they could do that. I know, you know. I've Not that it's this, the healthy way to do it, but, no. but luckily but, you were able to conceive. Yeah, and he was a miracle because he really saved my life. Because uh, for the first time in my life, in my entire life, mm -hmm. I had someone who loved me mm -hmm. and who needed me, who yeah. genuinely loved and needed me. Because yeah. I'd grown up in a really horrible, violent um, environment with mm -hmm. my adopted parents. Mm -hmm. and, and so I finally went, oh my God, well, if somebody loves me and needs me, then I better kind of sort myself out. Yeah. So I literally changed my life when he was born and I lost wow. a lot of weight and um, very healthily uh -huh. and wrote books about it. Really? Became known for it. Really? Yeah. And um, and became, I, I used to help other women do the same uh -huh. and uh, had big groups of women all over the world who would follow me online and <gasps> I'd help them. Um, what's your son's name? Kai. Kai. Which ironically in mm. um, Maori means food. Really? I, <laughs> right? Did I you know that? No, <laughs> I did not know that. I <laughs> named my kid food. Are you serious? Right? Like seriously? What the? Wow. 
I laugh, I laugh so much when I found Talk that out. Talk about subconscious. Right? <laughs> and it was like, I finally have my food source. <laughs> right? Oh my, my permanent food source. Luckily, I think Kai means something else in Hawaiian. It Let's means look ocean. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's stick with that. Right, I named him after a really wise and gentle centaur in Greek mythology, <laughs> and I am sticking with that. Okay. He's not a pig on a spit. <laughs> no. Poor Kai. Mm, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so how did you go about losing all that weight? Well, I did it really, like I didn't know anything at that point. I really, I was just so dumb. And uh, I had done- You don't sound so dumb. No, seriously, I'd done all those stupid diets. I'd done the all apple, the all egg, the oh, well. all chicken, the all egg, didn't Great lose food. any weight, but I lost a lot of friends. Woo! Yes. Right? All I did the cabbage soup diet. Also, right? big like, flatulence diet. Jenny Craig diet, which yeah. in the first week I lost three, maybe $400. Yep. Boom, chit. Right. No, and it was like I'd done, I was a cereal dieter. Mm. dieter. It was crazy. and. Um, and so I kind of was like, oh, okay. So I really just committed to learning mm -hmm. about food and, and I just started walking. I was big. Okay. I, was, I mean, I was bigger than I am now. Like I was 100 pounds heavier. Wow. And, um, and had a little baby in a stroller. And yep. I just pushed him everywhere. Great. Uh, pushed him to kindergarten, pushed him back, uh, walked every single day, and then educated myself about food. Mm -hmm. I ate every three hours. Mm -hmm. I did a rough kind of calorie thing. I was like uh -huh. 12 to 1400 calories, okay. roughly 30 grams of fat, but I wasn't strict about it. It was really mm -hmm. just about eating and eating healthy foods yeah. and cooking. Right. And, um, and through that time, really educated myself so well. In the first week of my diet, I actually fell down 22 stairs and shattered my leg and wound up in a wheelchair. Oh my God. <laughs> but decided that it wasn't gonna stop me. I had a walking cane. They told me I would never walk without a limp and that I would never run. Really? And a year later, I finished a 14 kilometer fun run. Okay. And I came 30,341st. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Go Good me. Job. Right. Yeah. Hey, there's a first in there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. There were 60,000 runners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I beat people in wheelchairs. That's awesome. Right. But seriously, that is inspirational. <laughs> no, it was amazing. My whole life was really different. And, yeah. and, you know, I kept a diary of it and it became very successful cool. around the world. And, um, and, you know, I was in a really good space uh -huh. and then I wrote a couple more books because people would write to me and go, tell me exactly what you'd done. Right. And I kind of thought, well, I had not, and I read back mm -hmm. out of my book and it was really just my diary of my, I guess my relationship with food, because yeah. I really, that was like my whole life. Yeah. And, um, and so I did that and I wrote a kid's book and then I got a phone call one day saying, hey, did you want to host Biggest Loser? Wow. All right. <laughs> wow. Well, I didn't return the call for like five days because I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I thought it was my friends, like, to have a love. Hey, you want to host Biggest Loser? Hey. <laughs> right, like, ah. right. Really? Yeah, yeah. And finally, they tracked me through another source and went, no, really, would you like to host it? Wow. And the irony of that mm -hmm. is that that's when my weight and my problem with my weight started up again. Really? Because they, I was healthy. You got attention. Well, no, quite the opposite. Um, well, yeah, that too. I mean, I definitely got engaged to the very first guy I dated. Okay. skinny okay. and then that broke up and then I got engaged to the second guy really? so I haven't ever dated as a skinny girl uh-huh never in my entire life have I ever dated wow skinny I've been fat for huge portions of it and when I get skinny I, I end up with the first person who who loves me which is usually the wrong person uh-huh so um so then but no it was more it was actually ironically a, a pretty unhealthy environment mm -hmm. um and they hired me i was healthy and curvy yeah but like television it puts on 12 pounds sure i'm really not 253 pounds i'm actually 100 pounds it's just the camera <laughs> making me look clear okay yeah <laughs> and i'm 21 years old um mm -hmm. and, and uh i was really pressured to lose even more weight and become like this ultra skinny right. host. Um, right. You know, it was more expensive to hire a normal bodied girl because they had to buy clothes, whereas mm -hmm. designers could had small sample sizes. So yeah. they were trying to convince me to to lose even more weight so it was cheaper for them to dress me. Oh my me, God. Right? And our version of the Emmys, um, they bought me, my stylist bought me a dress that was a size too small. And uh, I was told that I had to shrink into it. And wow. they would, you know, text me nil by mouth, don't eat anything, just mm -hmm. eat soup. It's mm -hmm. the Logie's diet. Yeah. And so I started a really dangerous, um, I guess, cycle, cycle of, of not eating mm -hmm. and going on massive crash diets like the lemon detox, the master cleanse. Mm -hmm. I would do that 
and lose bulk right. amounts of weight for awards season. Right. And then off camera, bulk which, up again. Which completely messes with your metabolism. Right, completely. And then yeah. I was in an environment surrounded by people who were trying to lose as much weight as possible to win mm. a prize and right. willing to go to great lengths to do it. Right. Uh, and some horrifying lengths to do it. I was surrounded by so-called professionals that I saw doing things that just really changed my idea of healthy weight loss. Yeah, I can't wait to hear bodies. some of these stories. <laughs> right? Stay tuned for my tell-all book. Yeah. Um, no, and but it I'll was really it. right. It was really shocking, and mm -hmm. I really had joined it in the hope of being able to help so many people, but right. found myself in a really crazy environment that didn't help me. Um, do you take any vitamins, supplements, anything like that? Nope. No vitamin supplements. Nope. Uh, how about medications? Nope. I should be taking medication. <laughs> Why do you I should be severely medicated. <laughs> no, really. No. I mean, I joke, but I had the I, the most severe uh, bout of depression of my entire life just recently, and I've just come out of it. Hmm. And um, and it was really intense. Like I was like for a while. There was like six weeks or eight weeks where I was literally drop my son at school and curled up in a ball and cry all day long and and I was sick as well. Like I had a chest infection and and it just my whole world kind of caved in mm -hmm. and I, a really significant little thing happened that kind of got me out of it and um, and um, I, it's been amazing ever since. Like the last couple of months have been really incredible. Okay, which is why also I'm really ready to do this. So it wasn't drugs. What what was no that? no it wasn't what, drugs. What was that no, thing? It, it was a. Uh, I mean, it was a combination of things, but um, since the death of my mother, mm -hmm. I'd been so busy, right? Like, I, I almost ate myself to death. Then I had a kid, mm -hmm. and it was really busy because he was a kid with special needs. And yeah. then I had a huge career burst where I became an author and a television host. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. And then I came here, and everything fell apart. Mm -hmm. I came for a job. It fell through. My whole life fell apart. Mm -hmm. And my kid was old enough to be fairly self-sufficient. I had no friends. I was like, oh. <gasps> Right, and it was almost like it was the first time in my life I, I got to grieve mm -hmm. for my mother. Right. And, or had the time and space to do it. Yeah. And allowed myself to do it. And, um, and so at first I think I tried to just stuff myself with food right. to stop the feelings. And then, uh, and then I really was like, okay, well, I really just have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And then I had a really, really freaky thing happen. Uh, I was at a talk show and a psychic pulled me out of the audience. Oh, wow. Right? Swear to God. Yeah. And she literally described my mother's death. But what she told me was that it wasn't my fault. And I had lived with the thought for uh, 20 odd years that I had been the person who had caused my mother's death. Because hmm. I, it was, she was really depressed and, and, um, and when we reunited, it was really rocky and yeah. I just pushed her away. Mm -hmm. And, was like, you know what, I'm not strong enough to look after myself, let alone strong enough, you know, just give me my space. And yeah. that was the last time I spoke to her and I thought she'd killed herself and I thought she'd killed oh, herself wow. because I pushed her away. Aww. And she described her death and everything and she was like telling me, you know, she loves you, she wants you to get over it, you know, you didn't, it was not your fault. And That's incredible. Right? And I, there was something really amazing. An opening uh, Right, I just let it go. Mm -hmm. Like I just, and she was like, you've got to start living your life, you've got to live, you live, live. And... And I've spent a lot of time with this woman since, and and I just really realised that I have to start living my life. I can't, yeah. you know, I lost my mother. I lost my mother the day I was born. Yeah. I lost her when I got reunited with her, mm -hmm. and I just have to learn to let that go. And yeah. I, I just have to live the life I was given. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've ever really allowed myself to do that. Mm, that so sounds so good. It's time. Yeah. You know and. I think is that when this show kind of found well, you yeah. and you found it? Yeah, we we came together mm -hmm. and it, and I've always been really good at sharing mm -hmm. and helping lead the way and and it just seemed like the right thing to do and yeah. to kind of cuz you know even just recently cuz I get paparazzi you know and photos get published and mm -hmm. they're really horrible they're terrible photos and you're in your private life and it's really, and it's been very, very vicious mm -hmm. the last few months. Like, I was on the front of the National Enquirer with the worst beach body ever, and then just this week, you know. Yeah. And it's interesting, though, what it has sparked is uh, I'm getting emails and letters from people all over the world mm -hmm. who are inspired. You go, oh, I'm kind of the fattest, you know, I've been in, in years and years, and yet they're inspired by me. Right. You know, and that's really exciting because I get to kind of help others and there's so right. many other people in this situation. Yep. So to be honest and open and I guess lift the veil of celebrity, because you know, celebrities put on weight, they hide and they get trainers and, 
Yeah. You know, that's not real. And and so that's this is this is it. This is real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is real. 